I'm Clint, and in this video I'll be giving you a rundown of the subjects for the new art challenge. These will be for the group two tickets. So if you want to get feedback from me on the live streams here on Fridays, and you want to do some fantasy art and sketching of some races that we haven't seen before, listen up. I'll give you a rundown of what we're doing. So let's jump in. We're continuing the topic of the fantasy races from group one, but we're going over two new races. One is a playable human race, and the other is an enemy ogre type race. Now, both of these are going to be a standalone figures with white backgrounds. This would be a illustration you would have for a player's guidebook, where you just need that image to represent what that particular race or uh, monster type looks like. Um, do not put any backgrounds in them, and the lighting doesn't even need to be that dramatic. It just needs to be really clear what these people look like. Now, this is continuing the topic of Spireville, which is the fictional D&D slash Pathfinder game that we have used multiple times here in order just to give a topic for the art challenges. And the first one up is the Hasori. They are the human types. Outline. For their history, they are the descendants of temple workers of gods who have long since died. Now, they wander the world without a home. They were pure humans once, but they were changed by their desert gods to better fit for service in their desert home. Now, appearance-wise, in many regards, they remain human. Only in the skin tone, eyes, and their general constitution do they differ in any significant way. Their skin tone ranges from bronze to deep umber, think African skin tones, but they have distinct gold organic designs spread throughout. It's just part of their skin designs. It is not painted or tattooed on. They also have bright gold irises, not the entire eye, just the iris and the pupil. Uh, they dress primarily in fabrics that give a Bedouin or Romany vibe. Now, traits wise, they are resistant to heat, they have a weakness to cold, they have semi photosynthesis. That they get energy from the sun, same way plants do. Uh, they have poor dark sight, and they are sensitive to incorporeal presences. While not visually useful, it's kind of interesting, and maybe gives you some ideas of how to approach them. So for these, I want you to depict either a full-body male with an accompanying female portrait, or full-body female with an accompanying male portrait. Uh, for the one, you'd give them the overall sense of what that sort of race looks like from a distance. And then the other, for the portrait, you really want to show off what the gold eyes and the gold patterns on the dark skin look like. Okay, for the Ugramoth, this is a non-playable race. They're cousins to the ogre and distance cousins to giant kin. Uh, the Ugramoth are among the most powerful and feral of the family. They are creatures of low intelligence, and they can make their home in most climates, but prefer the tall woods of colder climates. Uh, Appearance-wise, they are massive, uh, standing about 15 feet or 4.5 meters, and they possess four arms, two on each side. Their face remains similar to ogres, with the big mouths, uh, kind of the small noses, the ears that point off sort of to the sides, possibly with some tusk. But they were somewhat more ape-like. So think about how to incorporate that into their design. They differ from Ogrehine by having more hair, uh, messy strands hanging down from the side of their heads, and more fur-like hair across parts of their body, which make them better suited for their colder climates. Uh, their clothing is simple and sparse, you know, animal pelts, scavenged fabrics, uh, just tied on with ropes and stuff. Uh, they may have minor elements of crude armor made out of planks of wood or sheets of metal. Uh, maybe they have bones kind of tied on for armor. They're not very sophisticated, uh, but they're just brutally strong. Uh, depict a male ogre moth holding a stone-headed weapon with an accompanying illustration of a mid-range weapon they may use. 
So the stone-headed weapon, maybe it's a massive boulder high into the end of a log that they use. Uh, maybe it's some sort of uh, broken obsidian that has a nice cutting blade on it that they've fashioned into a weapon. Uh, the mid-range weapon, I want to see some imagination here. I'm not entirely sure what it is. Uh, maybe it's a chain that has something affixed to the end of it that would give them a longer reach. Uh, maybe they, they use some sort of javelin-style weapon. So experiment with that and see what you come up with. Um, it shouldn't be part of their image. It would be image of the character. And next to it, let's see their weapon. Okay, so if you're getting into the challenge, uh, you want to remember that you want to follow the brief. And if you have an idea of a direction to take the character that the brief doesn't necessarily say, or you're not sure if what you have in mind would be allowable within the outline, shoot me an email, uh, send me a message on Discord, something like that, and let me know what you're thinking. And I will let you know if that fits or not, because we don't want you to have to waste a lot of time with what may not actually fit. Uh, of course, you will be getting a PSD file for you to plug in all your references and your sketches and all that for submission. I have an entire video. Uh, when you purchase your ticket, there's a video with it that explains all of that. So let's take a look at the guide images here. All right now, I don't own any of these. I did not make any of these. I found them online, Pinterest, uh, ArtStation, etc. But there is a couple of different things that we want to note from each of these. The fur could be similar to this. In that there's not fur everywhere, they're not like a bear, they're just localized. Uh, on this one, it's just the hands and the feet, they're on the head. So you could do that, maybe it's top heavy, maybe it's more about the shoulders and going down the arms. Uh, so experiment with that. Also, explore physicalities and the proportions. This is where you can really help get it away from being human. Uh, where you have very short legs compared to the size of the upper body, very long arms. This is a classic D&D &D ogre to kind of give you an idea. This also gives you um, something to think about as far as the physicality. And I'm not set on this, which is they have the really big sort of belly, a little bottom heavy like that. Or are they more top heavy, like you would see more like this guy. It's all up in the shoulders and the waist is quite a bit thinner. So play with that and see which one you feel. Overall, they should just feel pretty thick. Uh, none of them are, like, lean and mean. That's not what we're looking for. They are still fairly ogreish. This would be the uh, maximum amount of armor and also appropriate style construction of kind of how it's made and how it's latched on. This is a great example of color tones uh, being gray and brown and having transitions. So the top is warm, the bottom is cooler. That's a good idea. And don't forget, they do have four arms. Okay, the Hussori. These are good examples of the golden iris and pupils. They have that sort of uh, retro-reflective thing going on with them. Uh, the gold designs could be something like this, um, kind of geometric. But stay away from actually this, though. They don't have symbols necessarily added into it. Uh, also think if it can almost be similar to a animal patterning. Maybe it's some sort of repetitive pattern that goes across them like a fish pattern. Uh, play around, see what your inspirations could be there. The clothing could go quite a different ways. Uh, maybe it's uh, fewer sheets of fabric that are very billowy. If you want to add a little breeze to it and have the fabric flowing off of them, I think that would be nice to give a sense of motion. Uh, considering giving multiple layers and adding sort of designs and embroidery onto the patterns to give more of a visual richness. Or what kind of items they could be carrying. Give them a prop to be handling, to be looking at, uh, to be utilizing. Now, if this is your first time, then realize that you will have four weeks to create your image. You'll have two weeks in order to create your concept. For that, we're looking for pencil, on, on line drawings with maybe some simple values on them. We don't need a finished image. We don't need details. We don't even need colors. That. And then we will take a look at it. You'll submit it in. We'll look at it, review it, give you some feedback during the live stream. And then we'll have two more weeks to implement those sort of feedback and finish the image. We'll submit it in again. 
and then I'll give you a second review and give you feedback on the final. Of course, you are welcome to upload and share your progress on the Discord server. And there's hundreds of people active on the Discord server. So uh, there is a place to go share that and get feedback from your peers in order to help improve your designs. Okay, well, that should wrap it up. If you have questions, feel free to put them down below in the video or get a hold of me out on the Discord link also below. And if you want to pick up a ticket, link will be below on that as well. So, I'll see you then. Keep drawing.